Hello everybody, Cappuccino here, and in this guide we are going to teach you how to stop dying as mercy. Easier said than done, right? And in this in-depth video guide, we are learning tactics to enhance your survivability. First, we will go over the best practices for positioning, next, movement practices and techniques, and lastly, other tips that will help you play better overall. <music> So let's start with positioning. Mercy is not a close range, nor a long range healer. She is a mid range healer, which means to be effective, you have to be relatively closer to the battle in order to do your job. A big caveat to this is that you lack the offensive capabilities to peel for yourself and stay alive like other healers. This makes positioning and movement and game sense your biggest assets to your survivability. In most situations, you want to be healing a little closer than the max range of your beam. Unless you're getting hard dived, a best practice is to stay away from the battle. You don't want to be too far however because that will limit the healing and movement options you will have. Next, you want to try to position yourself around cover as much as possible. I made a video earlier that talks about the importance of playing around corners and Mercy is no exception to that rule. Healing around corners allows you to minimize your hitbox from enemies. A big tip that helps you do this is utilizing the trickle effect of healing after line of sight is broken. Even though you lose line of sight of your target for a short period of time, they will still be under the effect of your beam. So theoretically, you can continuously heal someone as long as they stay in sight of your vision in one to two second increments. Most of the time, it's to your advantage to be on the high ground because of the protection and cover it provides for most enemies. If you can get to the high ground while being in range to heal most of your team, you should probably take it. While it seems safe, flying super high up in the air with a Pharah or Valkyrie, it's not always. In some scenarios, you can be an easy target for any competent hitscan player. It is recommended that you still use cover from walls or roofs to minimize your hitbox. So to summarize, great positioning would be away from the battle but close enough to heal most of your team, around cover near corners, and finally on the high ground. Here is a clip that shows a great position that utilizes all three of these. On this high ground of Dorado, I'm able to reach most of my teammates through healing. I'm also on high ground and I'm able to take advantage of the ground cover and the right side of the building to protect myself. Now let's move on to movement. The Guardian Angel ability should be your primary way for moving around, but don't feel pressured to constantly be spamming it. If you have a great protected and covered position where you can heal everyone, you shouldn't feel the need to move. That being said, you'll probably still be forced to constantly reposition anyway, even if you aren't dived, to keep in range of supporting your team. One technique to enhance your movement is the Guardian Angel Slingshot, which will allow you to get a few extra meters out of your Guardian Angel and will shoot you past your targeted friendly. To execute this ability, you press and hold the jump key towards the end of your Guardian Angel when you are just about to arrive to your target destination. The most common use for this slingshot ability is when you are getting dived. Using the slingshot will maximize the distance between yourself and the enemy chasing you. However, referring back to my previous point of positioning, you want to try to be aware of where you are slingshotting to and if it has cover or high ground to protect you. Another technique is the Guardian Angel Cancel, which will cut short your flight in midair. You execute this by tapping on the Guardian Angel key again while you're in mid-flight. Here are a few examples of where this would be useful. Here I Guardian Angel to two of my teammates, but I forget to cancel the Guardian Angel, so it takes me all the way to where they are, which is extremely dangerous and I could have died in that situation. In this next clip, I actually use the Guardian Angel cancel when I go for supporting this teammate, but then he dies and I quickly cancel the Guardian Angel to make sure I don't fly all the way over to his body. The next technique is the super jump, which will allow you to get high ground without needing a teammate actually on the high ground. What you are doing is basically slingshotting yourself upwards by simulating a lower position than your teammate. To do this, you want to press crouch and guardian angel at the same time and then after you collide with the teammate, press and hold the jump key. My best advice is to try this in the practice range with bots to get a feel for it. 
Here's a quick example in a game of me using the super jump. I boost off of my Hanzo to get higher ground on this Blizzard World platform. While this is a really cool ability, you shouldn't always feel the need to use it. It's not always the best idea to go as high as possible in the open, especially if they have a competent hitscan. So in summary, you want to use your movement abilities when necessary to position yourself in optimal positions throughout the game. Lastly, let's go through other tips to increase your survivability. You can use the positioning things we learned in this video, such as using corners and cover for resurrections as well. That being said, risky resurrections are generally not worth it. You don't have to resurrect every death you see. Sometimes you're better off staying alive and not risking another death for yourself. If you get dive and there's no one far away to fly to, you can use your teammates nearby to body block the damage. This will take some practice, but you want to start tracking big ultimates and expecting them by positioning yourself out of the effective range. So if you think a grab is coming, try to position yourself further away from your team or around a corner. Stay aware of your surroundings and don't tunnel vision on the target your beam is connected to. Always be looking around and have a plan on where you want to fly if you get dived. Here is an example of panicking and flying to the nearest visible teammate and putting yourself in a bad position, instead of looking around and being aware of safe options if you were to get dived. I want to leave you with this last piece of advice, which is to not feel pressure to heal every teammate in danger. Sometimes people put themselves in really bad positions that you don't have to follow and die as well. An effective mercy balances supporting as many teammates as possible while still maintaining a good position to improve survivability. This was one of my more longer guides, but hopefully you found it helpful and enjoyed it. Special shout out to Faith and Zolik who gave me feedback on this guide. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.